During this historic downturn in the economy, millions of Americans have received foreclosure notices. But getting that dreaded notice from a bank does not always mean you'll lose your home. Eddie Rosa brings us one man's story in the first of a series of special reports on facing the mortgage crisis. Richard Mitchell was 50 years old before he and his wife were able to buy their first house. That was 14 years ago. Since then, he's put a lot of sweat equity and loving care into his home in the Roseland neighborhood. He's done everything from stripping old paint to planting a rose bush for his wife every year on their wedding anniversary. But last summer, while Mr. Mitchell worked as a delivery driver, his American dream turned into a nightmare. I had uh, two car accidents uh, last year, one in June and one in uh, July. I wasn't able to keep up with the route, so the first one went all right, and then after I had the second accident, uh, everything fell downhill because I had to take more time off work, and I eventually lost my route. And uh, everything started going downhill then. In the blink of an eye, the Mitchells went from two incomes to only one. But Mrs. Mitchell's salary wasn't enough to keep up with mounting bills and an adjustable rate mortgage that had almost doubled from $723 to more than $1,300. While the rule of thumb is that no more than a third of one's income should go to housing costs, the Mitchells were paying more than 80%. It was hard, because it was, it was like I couldn't do nothing. Uh, my hands were tied, I had no work, I was out of work, and um, it was really hard. Did you think that you were going to lose your house? Yes. I thought it. I kept a positive attitude. I hoped for the best, but I was preparing for the worst. And the worst did come, a notice of foreclosure. This despite Mr. Mitchell's best efforts to negotiate with his bank. At first they were working with me, and then after that, uh, I, it was so many different people that I talked to, because you never could talk to the same person when you call up. And, uh, it just got thrown around and then they just got to the point where they just said, no, we're not gonna work with you no more. And uh, they just said, well, we'll just see you in court. With seemingly no hope, the Mitchells were on their way to becoming the latest victims of a foreclosure crisis that has devastated not only many families, but many neighborhoods as well. In August alone, slightly more than 13,000 residential properties went into foreclosure in Illinois. A slight drop from July, but a 22% increase from August of last year. Michael Van Zellingen heads the home ownership program at Neighborhood Housing Services of Chicago. He says the number of homeowners seeking help fighting foreclosure has not only skyrocketed, but they're also more diverse. Since about Thanksgiving of last year, it's moved up the income ladder, so we, we still see uh, tremendous bulk of our clients coming from low to moderate income neighborhoods, but we're seeing folks coming from Lincoln Park, the suburbs, the north side, families that are making in the sixty-five to one hundred and fifty thousand dollar a year range who are having trouble paying their mortgage, and, and they have good loans. Yes, my name is Jerome from Neighborhood Housing Services. Um, I was calling in regards to your modification packet. In the last two months, Neighborhood Housing Services says it's filed more than 500 applications for homeowners seeking loan modifications under the Making Home Affordable program launched by the Obama administration in March. The program offers financial incentives to banks that help struggling homeowners reduce their mortgage payments. But six months into the program, it's come under fire. Only 6% of the estimated 4 million homeowners who qualify for loan modifications have been helped so far. Neighborhood Housing Services says about 30% of its clients are falling through the cracks. We send in all of the documents that the lender requires, they get lost. Uh, we send them in again, they get lost again. You work with one person who says, I've got your information, I'm evaluating it. The next day the homeowner gets a call from the collections department that says, I don't know what you're talking about, we're not going to give you a loan modification, I'm going to take your house, and screams at them and, and poisons the well. Hundreds of homeowners recently turned out for a Making Home Affordable event in Chicago. They had a chance to talk face to face with a representative from their bank. But banking officials admit they're still trying to catch up with customers who need help staying in their homes. 
we've set up separate departments just to deal with the with the housing counseling agencies and I think we're all experiencing volume issues is you know we have so many new programs and so many new borrowers that are eligible we're working to, to uh, be able to quickly process all of those things. As banks struggle to keep up, housing counselors are working overtime to help struggling homeowners. Forestine Bernard is with Neighborhood Housing Services. Richard Mitchell turned to her for help. Our first obligation is to tell the client, do not panic, do not panic. Let's get something in place. Let's get an action plan together. And what I look at is um, ways of eliminating or decrease in debt. And a lot of times we have things that we don't need, but we buy things that we want. Neighborhood Housing Services helped Mr. Mitchell get a 30-year fixed loan, and his interest rate was reduced from over 10% to 6.5%. He's working again, and the home that holds so many memories will remain his. We have uh, a little bit of money left over so we can save some now. Um, and things are looking better. It means he'll be planting rose bushes for his wife for the foreseeable future. For Chicago Tonight, I'm Eddie Arusa. Housing advocates warn that there are many scammers out there and recommend only using counseling services approved by the Department of Housing and Urban Development. For more resources, we have a special website for our series, Facing the Mortgage Crisis. You can go there to find counseling resources, learn about foreclosures in your neighborhood, and access tools that will help you better understand the mortgage crisis.